Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. Welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to review Unit 2, Topic 2 of AP Psychology, which is all about thinking, problem solving, judgments, and decision making. So get out those guided notes and follow along as we continue to learn more about Unit 2. All right, now we have to start by talking about how we as individuals organize information. When we come across information, we use concepts, which is when we group similar things together. You can remember concepts as mental categories. This is what helps us keep similar items grouped. For instance, the concept of fruit would probably include apples, bananas, and oranges. All different things, but they fit in the same group due to their traits. Speaking of concepts, make sure you are also familiar with the term prototypes. This is the best or most typical example of a concept. For instance, when I say fruit, what is the first image that pops into your head? Whatever that image is, that's probably your prototype for fruit. Now, throughout life, we are constantly learning and engaging in new experiences. So it's actually natural that we change our thinking and understanding of the world around us. To help with understanding all of the information that we take in every day, we use schemas. A schema is a mental framework that helps us organize and understand information. This is what lets us know what to expect in certain situations based on past experiences. For example, you have a schema for school. This probably includes classrooms, teachers, desks, bells, and of course, Ah, that amazing cafeteria food. Now, if you transferred schools or went to a new school, your brain would use your schema of schools to understand what to expect of the new building before you even got there. Now, don't get schemas confused with concepts. Remember, concepts are about what something is. Think of categories and definitions, whereas schemas are more about how things work or what to expect in certain contexts. Over time, we can see that our schemas change. This generally happens in two ways. The first being assimilation, which is when you learn something new and fit it into your existing schema. Assimilation does not change the schema. Instead, it just incorporates the new information into the existing schema. The second way is through accommodation. This is when you learn something new that doesn't quite fit your existing schema. So you change your schema to fit the new information. Just remember, assimilation is when new information is incorporated into the schema without changing it. And accommodation is when you change your thinking and schema to fit the new information. And don't worry if you're still not sure about these concepts, I created a practice quiz titled Cognitive Foundations. You can use this to practice and test yourself on everything that we just talked about. Remember, the quiz is in the ultimate review packet. Just click the link down below. So besides trying to figure out how to categorize information or what to expect in a situation, our brain also needs to do a lot of problem solving. Whenever we encounter Counter different problems, situations, or new experiences, we utilize our executive functions, which are mental skills that help us plan, organize, and reach our goals. These are the skills that allow us to think critically, make a plan, stay focused, remember important information, and of course, solve problems. And actually, speaking of solving problems, we can see that we as individuals utilize different methods to solve problems and overcome challenges. Sometimes individuals utilize algorithms, which is where a person tackles a problem step by step in a systematic way. For example, if you forgot which password you used, you might decide to try each and every password that you've used in the last five years. This approach often takes more time to do, but generally works out in the end. Individuals also use heuristics, which are mental shortcuts based on past experiences. This is often much faster, especially compared to algorithms, but doesn't always get us the right answer. There is a variety variety of heuristics that people use, but for this video we are just going to focus on two. The first is representativeness heuristics, which involves making judgments based on how much something resembles or represents a typical case or stereotype. This can cause individuals to overlook important details in favor of information that aligns with their expectations or personal biases. And the second one is availability heuristics, which involves making judgments based on how easily examples come to mind. This can lead to errors when decisions are heavily influenced by recent or vivid memories rather than a full consideration of all of the facts. So when we make decisions, our past experiences and the way a situation is presented end up influencing what we decide to do. For instance, sometimes we get stuck
stuck in our ways. We come across a problem that seems familiar and we keep trying to solve that problem the same way we did in the past. One reason we can sometimes struggle with problem solving is due to a mental set, which is the tendency to approach a problem in a way that worked in the past, even if it's not the best solution for the current situation. While this can be helpful, it can also limit our ability to find better or more efficient solutions in new situations. Now, don't get this confused with a schema. Both mental sets and schemas are cognitive frameworks, but they serve different purposes. A mental set is specific to problem solving, while a schema is focused on organizing information. Speaking of using past information to tackle current challenges, we also need to talk about priming, which refers to the phenomenon where exposure to one's stimulus actually influences how we respond to a later stimulus. Now, there are two types of priming that you want to be familiar with. The first one is repetition priming, which occurs when you are exposed to a specific stimulus that makes it easier to recognize the same or similar stimulus later on. The second type is semantic priming, which involves the influence of one word on the interpretation of another related word. For example, say we were talking about doctors and I showed you the word doctor. Then I showed you a bunch of other words. You're probably more likely to quickly recognize or process related words like nurse or hospital. And that's because it's the first word that primed your brain to look for related concepts. Another related cognitive process that you want to be familiar with is framing. And this refers to how information is being presented and how the presentation can actually influence our thoughts, judgments, and decisions. We can see that depending on how the information is worded or structured, our interpretation of the information will often change. Framing is especially noticeable in the media. News stories are often framed in a specific way by emphasizing certain details, omitting others, or using emotionally charged language, all to shape how the audience perceives the issue and forms their opinions. Now, of course, don't forget, if you need more practice with how we as individuals problem solve, make sure you check out the practice quiz inside my Ultimate Review packet that reviews all of these concepts that we just talked about. You can find a link down in the description below. All right, now that we have talked about how we think and solve problems, let's examine a couple cognitive processes that can actually lead us to make some bad decisions. First is the gambler's fallacy, which is the incorrect belief that the likelihood of a random event changes based on previous outcomes. For example, imagine you're at the roulette table and the ball has landed on red 10 times in a row. Well, you might start to believe that black is due next, but this is actually a fallacy. Each spin is independent and the probability remains the same every time. Past outcomes don't influence future ones in the game of chance. And this kind of flawed thinking can lead to risky or irrational decisions, especially in situations that involve probability or randomness. The second is the sunk cost fallacy, which is the tendency to continue investing in something simply because you've already put time, money, or effort into it, even when it's no longer beneficial for you. For instance, imagine that you've started a business that initially showed a lot of promise, but now it's clearly failing. Instead of cutting your losses, you might keep pouring in more resources just because you've already invested so much in the past. This fallacy often leads people to make decisions based on what they've already spent rather than focusing on what's best moving forward. Both of these fallacies show how our past experiences and emotional investments can actually cloud our rational decision making. These two concepts often often trip students up. So to help, I created some other resources to help you review, and I put them inside the ultimate review packet. That way you can get even more help if you do need it. All right, so to wrap up this video, we need to also talk about creative thinking, which is a way of thinking that involves coming up with new and original ideas. Generally, people who are really creative use divergent thinking, which is when a person explores many possible solutions, expanding the range of options for solving a problem. And this is different from convergent thinking, which involves narrowing down the possibilities to identify the single best solution. Now, while this could be more efficient, it can sometimes hinder creativity. And another way in actually we can see creativity be hindered is by something called functional fixedness, which is when a person limits using an object only to its traditional way. For instance, if you need to hang a poster but don't have a hammer, you might not think to use a heavy book or object. Instead, you might fixate on a hammer being the only tool for the job 
job and spend more time trying to look for one. All right, so as you can see, there's a bunch of different ways in which we think, solve problems, and make decisions. But now comes the time to practice everything that we have learned. Don't forget to go and take the extra practice quizzes inside the Ultimate Review Packet. And check your answers to the questions on the screen down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I am Mr. Sint, and I'll see you next time online.